So tell me again, what does our professor want us to talk about? She wants us to talk about the relationship between mathematics and Christian belief. Math in our faith? This is going to be one short conversation. Well, let's see. She gave us a question to start off. Could God have made a world in which 2 plus 2 does not actually equal 4? Why, sure. Let the symbol 4 stand for what we usually mean by 5 and nothing to it. No, that's not what she meant. She meant in a world where 2 and 4 and plus and not equals still mean the same thing that they do now. Well, why not? That's what omnipotence means, right? God can do anything? I really don't think it's that simple. Suppose 2 and 2 does equal 5. That means anytime com somebody combines 2 th and 2 things, boom, 5 things. One thing has to seriously appear. I could put that sure to good use in my wallet. But I don't think that's the way it works. So, are you saying there are things God can't do? Yes, I am, and scripture says that too. For instance, it says that God cannot be tempted by evil. That means he can't decide to become an atheist. Ha <laughs> ha, that's a good one. Hey, wait, I'm actually serious. I'm sure you've heard that old question, can you make a rock so big that he can't lift it? Well, oh, God can't do things that don't make sense. Listen, as a math major, I would say differently. God can't do things that are logically inconsistent. Like denying 2 plus 2 equals 4, in my view, 2 plus 2 has always equaled 4 and always will equal 4. So, if math is eternal like God, does that mean it is as great as God? No, but I believe that God can't make 2 plus 2 equal 5. No way! Uh-uh! If God has to obey the laws of math, that would make God less than the math, and math greater than God. Look, there's a couple of ways at it. The laws of math could be part of God's nature, not greater than God. They're just part of God's ideas in mind. But some people think that that's claiming more about God than we could possibly know. They would agree that God made the world, God controls the world. They would all God understands everything there is to know about mathematics. But the question of whether or not math is a part of God, we don't know. We can't know. What was the first way ideas in God's mind? God doesn't have a mind like we do. The phrase God's mind is a metaphor. It's just a way of saying God has always known and understood mathematical ideas. Well, that seems right. But that doesn't mean God thinks exactly like us. That's not what you're saying, is it? I agree. There's got to be ways we don't think like God. For instance, in my math classes, we never know something that is except that it can be true unless we can absolutely prove it. But God knows everything. He doesn't have to write a proof or know a th that the theorem is true. He just does. Well, I've heard some theologians say that while we think differently than God, there are analogies between our thoughts and God's thoughts. For instance, God is consistent, and when we think consistently, we share that trait with God. Now, I would say that I love my family, and my love is way smaller than God's, but I still think it's like his in some very important ways. Listen, I understand, but our topic is God and math. Aren't we getting away from that? I want to go back to your point about proofs and maths. Now, we don't prove things in biology, but I still believe that what I learn in my bio labs and my biology classes is, in fact, still true. That's a different kind of knowledge that you're talking about, isn't it? You discover what's true in biology by doing experiments and observations and gathering data. Mathematical knowledge doesn't depend on experiments and observations. For me, art is very different. When I'm painting, my truth is much more intuitive and personal. It seems to me that mathematics is special. You're an art major. What is true for an artist can vary from one person to another. 
even from one day to another. And according to you, if God had made the world differently, then what is true would actually be different. But in math, theorems cannot not be true. They have to be true. I'm not so sure you're right about that. How can you be so confident that mathematical theorems and proofs are true? Scripture never makes any mathematical claims. I don't know, but it seems right to me. There's a lot of intuition in math. My preschool nephew understands that there's actually no biggest number. So even seems to have some sort of intuition about infinity. And you just need to kind of know how to go about solving certain mathematical problems. Do you think that God is the source of this intuition? Yeah, I guess I do. Boy, you sure seem to like math, but there's one thing I really, really hate about it. In every problem, there is only one right answer. But that's the best part. That's what I like best about math. Also, it doesn't make sense to me how math works. I learned these rules for manipulating symbols back in high school algebra, and I felt like I was being programmed like some kind of computer. But scientists seem to think algebra has some sort of connection with reality. Einstein follows rules for manipulating mathematical symbols with his equations for general relativity, and he predicted that when light waves would bend around a passing star. No, nobody had observed that, but when his predictions was actually tested, it turns out he was right. Yep, like I said, mathematics is special. Well, you sure don't need to get snooby about it. If it's so special, you didn't make it special. Yeah, you know, you're right. I'm sorry. Listen, I don't know if math is special, but it seems to me that there is something important here. Look at a DNA molecule. It's a double helix. It's a mathematical figure. It seems to be like everywhere we look in the universe we find math, and not just any old math. It's subtle, it's beautiful, but if we work at it, we can understand it. Do you see that as pointing towards God? I do. It makes more sense for me to say that than to say that God wasn't involved. Besides, it seems purposeful. Mathematics helps us understand things like gravity, electricity, and heat, and many other physical things. It also helps us to understand probability. We have a much better understanding of hereditary than people did over 200 years ago. And genetic engineers are trying to clone people and create superhumans and mess with all our genes and even worse. Hey, I get it. Okay, math can be misused. But can't any of God's gifts be misused? Could we understand God's creation without math? Or could we be better stewards without it? I don't think so. I see your point. But a lot of people have looked at mathematical structure of nature and concluded the universe is m as much a machine and we can understand it all without bringing God into the conversation one little bit. Sure, but I look at a snow-capped mountain and I think, isn't God wonderful? Somebody else looks at the same mountain and doesn't see God at all. How we interpret what we see depends on what we believe. Okay, I can see how a biology major can get excited about mathematics, but math and art, they're pretty far apart. You know, maybe not as far apart as you think. You've reminded me of something I often puzzle about. Some of my professors are pure mathematicians, and they often say the reason they do math is because it is so beautiful. Their reasons have nothing to do with gravity or DNA molecules or curing diseases. It's just beautiful. Maybe you better explain to us what you mean by beauty. Hmm. I would say order symmetry, surprise, the ability to express a whole lot very briefly, you know, things like that. Well, you missed color and contrast, but other than that, you nailed it to what a visual artist might say. Do you think the visual arts point us towards God? Artists used to say things like that a lot, but they don't much anymore. But I still think it's true, and I agree that beauty of nature can do that too. Of course, there's so much more to art than just beauty. I guess it's just like there's so much more to mathematics than beauty, I suppose. 
So maybe these qualities can point to mathematicians to God also. Maybe. I'm not sure if we understand the relationship between mathematics and Christian belief any better than when we started, but I think we do have a better understanding of what the issues are. Well, look at the time. It is time for us to head back to the class.